Today we're going to be talking about how cystinosis affects our lives personally as this has been a request from someone on the Facebook page and these are people who are going to be joining me. So this is my sister as you know and this I've is been in before. This is my mum. Hello. <laughs> okay mm -hmm. so I'm just going to read out the questions that we have got from the Facebook page and then I'm going to ask some questions to my sister and I'm going to ask some questions to my mum about what I think would be really useful for any people to hear. Okay. The first question says, um, it's from Shannon and it says, I would love to know how the teenage years went and any tricks you guys had to ensure compliance with meds during those years. Mum? Um, so firstly I just want to say the, the answers to the questions are our answers. So. Yes, Everybody can be different, <laughs> just for our family, so some people might not agree with what we've done and some people might, but this is just our experience. So, firstly, when the girls started high school, we made the decision not to give them their sister gone at lunchtime because of the smell on their breath, um, and as you all probably know, other children can be rather unkind, so that was the decision we made. They still took it in the holidays, yeah, and also it did used to make them feel sick. So that was one of the decisions we made. Other than that, the girls were always really good, never had a problem, always took their meds when they were meant to take them. <laughs> um, again, when they were ill, the only medication we would tend to stop would be the Cystagon because it's so harsh um, to help them aid, you know, recovery quicker. Because again, it just used to make them sick otherwise, and then they'd bring up everything, so it was just pointless. But no, they were safe, they were always really good. Yeah, and we used to mix it with yogurt, didn't we? Yeah. Until you were old enough to sort of swallow the tablets and things Could like they that. Just swallow the cystic, remember? Yeah, and we I did use parsley remember. as well. Parsley yeah, is meant to help with the breath. That's horrible. So um, we did use that for a while. Yeah, my if if anyone is like thinking of if they want to go like if they're starting high school and they're worried about getting picked on, I always just have a mint in the morning before I go to work. So that's a good true good tip. Um, and eating. Eating okay. as well. Oh, yeah, afterwards, I see you, you can now. eat afterwards as quickly as possible. Yeah. It does tend to help digest it quicker. I use yogurt now though, like before and after. Yeah. I don't. I just take. Can you drink any mints? Don't you? But you don't. You like mint. Do you? Okay. The second question says, um, it wasn't really a question, but it's a statement from Neve. It says, I'm all for younger memories and how you dealt with it all. So I'm going to phrase this into a question. Um, when we were first diagnosed, when we were younger, how did you, like, help us cope? Um, well Lucy was a baby, yeah. so Lucy was eight months old, so um, that in some ways was probably easier. You were a bit harder, it wasn't very nice because you were three yeah. and it was really hard trying to get the sort of sister gone in you and then all the other things you used to have. So we used to mix a lot of it into a beaker and Chocolate basically drops. through the whole of the day as you were playing I'd just sit on the floor with you and play and keep getting you to sip and drink but yeah it's not nice I mean as a parent it does make you feel really guilty I will say because you just feel awful that you're forcing you know horrible things on to you but yeah you've got to think and you know and as you get bigger it does get easier yeah um, and once you like I said could swallow tablets again so much easier. I still easier. remember the first ever time I swallowed a Cisco tablet I was in the bathroom and then I, I took it and I thought I dropped it but I hadn't and then dad called nanny because <laughs> I don't know you just came I still remember I had nine little ones and I didn't take them and you I kept them in my mouth and then I came outside when I opened the window I was like mum I just took all nine little ones and I was like yeah and then when you were at school <laughs> when they started primary school mm. I used to go Come in lunchtime. at lunchtime yeah. and I used to mix it on a spoon with yogurt I just and then just I'm just just yeah, yeah, they'd take yeah. it off my, like my finger into their mouth and, and then brush, like you say, brush your teeth after. Office and then it'll, um, it'll box. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's just, you know, doing what you can really. Yeah. What's best for, I mean, some children do swallow tablets a lot earlier. I saw it, I was quite young. Uh, the next question is kind of like a moral question for all of us really, but it says um, from Aaron, what did you do in terms of schooling? Well, yeah. I've sort of half answered that, so yeah, um, mm. I didn't work. So, oh, yeah. like I said, I basically went into the school every lunchtime, did their meds. Samantha, when she first started school, did come home for lunch because she struggled so much in trying to eat so in, eat, in that time because mm. obviously with the muscles and everything and the swallowing. So you, I think for the first, yeah. mm -hmm. I think till you started school, 
Yeah, was no, it yeah. you came home for lunch? Friends. But yeah, which wasn't nice wasn't because be all the other the kids made friendships. Yeah. And because Samantha came home, she mm. missed a it's lot, a social time, isn't it? which mm. worried me even more. But yeah. at least then, when you started school, I used to come in and do the both of you. And if there was any school trips, anything like that, I always yeah, went on school on. trips. Because um, again, I just even though you both had care plans, the school mm. just wasn't. No, it's I'm in high school. No. Really as well. um, I'm gonna say a little bit about high school. Uh, in high school, um, obviously every high school is probably different, but they weren't very helpful. And when I had my kidney transplant, the health coordinator was meant to tell my teachers, and she didn't. Mm. And one of my science teacher thought I went on holiday. <laughs> so, really? like, at the end of the day, you just have to deal with it like in your own family because you're the only ones that can really do anything. Yeah, and you're old enough then as well. It's a little bit different. Like, you are a bit older. So I just have to do different meds. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I missed about a year of high school um, in year eight when I had my transplant, but we both went to public school. We went homeschooled or anything. No, you don't. But obviously, right. homeschool is fine. You both did well in your exams and everything, didn't you? So people used to bully me because I was short and quiet. Weird. Me too. But well, and you look different, don't you? Say you? I well, was you had problems too. with your feet, didn't you? You both got. Um, I'm very small. You dad Ricketts, so you're a bit not need, aren't you, as well? So it's all things like that. Maybe you just pick on mouth and pick on me because yeah. I'm just my sister. I'm sorry. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just a couple of other things about being in primary school and high school. Um, one was in primary school, in year six we had this like toilet system um, where you had to put like, one person at a time in the toilet. Um, we were obviously allowed to go to the toilet whenever we wanted to. In high school we often got toilet passes so we could just show it and um, leave because we used to have this thing in our planners where you had to write down why you've left the classroom but we didn't really use that. And apart from that we didn't do PE. Um, not a lot in primary school and never really in high school. The only time I did PE, um, I got the lowest mark in all the class, so well, it is obvious there's little bits of even discrimination in the schooling system, but I really hope that everyone who's watching this video, I don't want to like discourage you obviously from sending your children to school or discourage any people like a bit younger than me, but you've just got to like keep going, keep, just ignore the teachers, like you've done your best so what if they give you the lowest mark like it's just stupid but yeah don't like let this make you um, give up hope but keep being you and you'll get through high school you'll get through primary school and then you'll just follow your dreams and don't let it stop you and don't let stupid people stop you either because you can power through your illness but other people around you might be trying to put you down but yeah as long as you know you can do it then just go for it basically and i hope that that helped mum what would be your um advice for parents who have just had their children diagnosed what would be like just your general advice in some ways i think as i say it's a bit i mean you two didn't have it well especially lucy um, I mean, when you were a baby, we you were diagnosed, you were three, so it was really stressful up until then. At least then when you got the diagnosis, we knew we could treat it, and the potassium was the main thing for you. Once you started having the potassium supplement, it, everything just got so much for you better in that respect. You know, you started eating a little bit more, you had more energy, whereas because Lucy was only eight months old, it was a lot easier in a way. Um, I mean, uh, such a long time ago, I was trying to remember, I used to put, actually with Lucy, we used to mix it in a syringe. That's what we used to do. We used to mix it in a little medicine pot with what? the parcel in the cystic gone with a little bit of water, didn't we? And then we that's right, we used to put it in a spoon? syringe. Yeah, Samantha had it on a spoon, but you had it, I forgot, actually, you had it in a and syringe. I actually had KCL as well. I had KCL. Yeah, so just, yeah, we, we used what to just squirt the, the, the cystic on that in your mouth right and then, mm. then quickly give you a bottle of milk afterwards. Um, but it is, it's, it is hard, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it really it's not hard. easy. When I, you get used to KCL, yeah, but then when you yeah, stop, I stopped it for a while to get it again, it was like really hard to get used to it again because I had it for so long, yeah. and the taste was like really right. Lucy had like pink KCL yeah, and I had potassium, what, what did I have? Potassium citrate? Yeah, potassium citrate, <coughs> phosphate sandals, carnitol, um, yeah. and you mixed now. it all, we mixed it all together in a massive sort of cup taste, of water and then like lemon, fizzy used lemon. to drink and it all through the day. And then we used to have it like no one touches carb. Yeah. <gasps> that was like really hard to drink when I had like tonsillitis. Yeah, really well again hard. we learned that afterwards didn't we? But no, it's, uh, I don't know, you, I mean like I say, because it was, you, learn how to do you do forget some of the horrible things that you went through, you sort of 
It's gone well here as well. It's Until like, you start you know, thinking about it, it again, it does remind you of how hard it was at times, but especially when you used to go when you were ill and you'd end up in hospital and that's not nice. It did ask you as well. Um, yeah, well, yeah, that never changes, I suppose, does it? Yeah. Really? Doesn't matter what age you are. I don't think yeah, but I'm getting out of hospital sometimes. Yeah. Um, okay, last question, probably. Um, how do, as a family, how do we deal with like transplants? Well, we've got a very supportive family also, uh, all around us and friends. We've had two well. different experiences because mum was like yeah. Yeah, really so early and different to mine. School wasn't she? And you were <laughs> poorly as well. Whereas mum yeah. was a lot. Whereas you it was still hard, like not nice, but it's a lot yeah. it was easier. Yeah. Um, but everybody helps, don't they? You know, like, like, yeah, yeah, sisters, uh, aunties brothers, uncles, aunties, uncles, they all. After. Everybody helps Just out. Friends yeah. as well help out with you know trips to the hospital and so Obviously, yeah, we're very. I think we are very lucky member. that we have got a very supportive. Transplant, you should tell of work, so yeah, my work, work again. After. My yeah. work were absolutely brilliant, and so were dads giving us that extra so. support. Mine were like pretty good. So. No, it all, and that all helps. Yeah. You know, it helps you deal you've with the situation. Some, you've around you to help Because it's stressful it's enough. As it is. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope this year's a better year for us. I think, I think that's why I really think we covered pretty much like personal lives relating to cystinosis. And if we didn't answer anything, we can also another video part you know, to what people want, be a bit more, more specific, specific yeah. and yeah. we'll Give try and answer it as best on. as we can. But like yeah. I said, it's. Every family's different, every child is different. We've got two children with yeah. cystinosis and both of your experiences have been different, yeah. totally different. So you, you just have to do what's best for your child and your family. Why well, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, but taking everybody yeah. out, it's nice getting people's yeah. experiences and that because it mm -hmm. helps. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you have any more questions relating to cystinosis or my family, please just leave them in the comments down below or you can message me on Facebook or you can message me on Twitter or you can message me on Instagram and all of those things are the same username as my YouTube and if you want my Facebook then just private DM me and I will let you know but thank you for watching leave a like if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more things like this and goodbye Bye! Alright, I'm going to say bye. Wait, so, I'm going to say friends for watching. Yeah, thanks very much for watching. Wait, in the video. I'm still watching. I forgot what I was going to say. I am wearing pyjama bottoms so that I can edit this video in comfortable humidity. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Wait, which side is it? Okay. I did this little sister notice ribbon on my face. Um. Maybe one day I'll do a little makeup video? I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, uh, my tattoo is also still on, so that's awesome.